Hi, welcome to COM 2026 OOP. Today we're going to talk about numerical literal and typecasting in Java. Now, numerical literal refer to the number in their basic form 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 4, negative 4, 6, 8, etc. Et Representing a lengthy number could cause some character mistakes. So, for example, this one, okay, the population here. Can you see how many digits are there? I can't. In Word or Excel, you can insert space or comma to represent a number so that it will look a little better, easier for people to read it. But in Java, you just can't do it. It will violate the syntax of Java. Java does provide you an alternative way to represent a lengthy number such that you can insert an underscore symbol between numbers. So for instance, you can say 9 underscore 999, or you insert the underscore in this 1 million, like this one, or you can even do it like 2 underscore 0 underscore 2 underscore 0. That will be totally fine. Now remember, you can't put the underscore at the beginning or at the end of the number literal. Remember, if you put an underscore uh, in front of a num numeric literal, it actually is a variable. Don't do it. By default, any decimal num num uh, numerical literal is considered as a double. So, for example, this one, 0 0.1, will be treated as a double. Even though storing one digit after that small space could be easily done with a flow. Okay? And when you assign a double literal to a flow, it will cause an error. So if you want to assign a value to a flow, you have to explicitly state that this uh, decimal number is a flow. To do it, we add an F after the number. So for instance, 3.14F, that will make the computer know we want to store this number 3.14 using flow format. And then this flow will be assigned to the rough time variable. Similarly, if you have an integer, it will be stored as int by default. But if you want that to be stored as a long literal, you can add an L after the number. So for instance, we can say long, long number equals to 500L. That will mean this 500 will be stored as a long instead. Now, this one you have to be very, very careful. Why? Because the lower case of L is lo looks very, very similar to the number 1. Okay? And 500L is actually a legitimate um, numeric literal. It looks very similar to 5001. Okay? So if you want to uh, state a number explicitly as a long literal, you better use the uppercase L. Other base number is also supported in Java. Java support binary, decimal, and hexadecimal. If you want to represent a binary number, you can start the literal by 0b. So beginning with 0b, that means this is a binary literal. Okay? 0b1101, that will mean 13. Okay? You can also insert uh, picture numbers of 0 in front of your value. So, for example, 0 b zero 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 one is the same as 0B1, which is 1 in decimal. Hexadecimal means that it's a base 16. Now, base 16 is not that usually used in our daily life or in any other field, but in computer science, especially when you're doing something related to hardware, hexadecimals are very, very frequently used. It takes a set of numbers from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. When it comes to the value 10, we represent it as A. 11 by B, uh, 13 by C, 
14 by D, 15 by, um, sorry, 10 will be A, 11 will be B, 12 will be C, 13 will be D, E will be 14, and F will be 15, right? And so if you represent the value 1, 0 in hexadecimal, this 1 is actually meaning um, 16, okay? So 0, 8, 1, 0. If you want to represent a hex number, that will be 0x. Zero 0x10 zero zero means it is uh, 16. 0, that also means 0x10000. Zero 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 zero. And 0xff zero will same as 255, five, which is calculated by 16 times f, which is 15. Okay, 16 times 15 plus 15, and that will give you 255. And same as this one. Now remember, you can add a underscore symbol between the number where I put one, so this is where I add it. Not the one, not the nice. Okay? The digital A, B, C, D, E, F could be in lowercase or uppercase, up to you. All right? Casting. Casting means that we want to change the data type from one type to another type. Okay? Because different types of values are stored in computer in different formats. We need to tell the computer, oh, I want to change the format. There are two types of the casting. One is called the widening, one is called the narrowing. Widening means we want to change from a small type to a bigger type or a more precise type. Narrow type means that we want to change the values from a bigger type to a smaller type or a more precise type to a less precise type. Okay? So you can upgrade your number from spike to short to some integer and then to a decimal numbers or narrowing we're putting double to flow to long and then finally to five. Widening if you use a uh, more space to store a bigger type to host a smaller type that will be no problem just like if you're moving from a small apartment to a big house right you won't need to worry about, uh, you can't hold, uh, you need to throw away something. No, no, no. Okay? Everything you put it there will be have enough room to host your original uh, apartment. But for narrowing, if you change it from a bigger type to a smaller type, it is possible that there is not enough room to host your content. Then that could have some problem. And so we need to do it uh, in another way. Widening, so let's say if this F1.2345 is this R float and we want to assign it to a double, you can simply write this one. That will be perfectly fine. We're telling the number D, okay, holding the value 1.2345 with double precisions. There will be no problem for sure, or will happen for sure. And similarly for this one, Integer that's holding 439234. Okay, and we want to assign this number to long. Where long has more space to host this one, there will be no problem and the program will just compile. However, if you do a narrowing, which means you want to use less space to host a bigger number, that could have a problem. Now let's look at this example. D equals 1.23456. This number can be hosted by a flow, okay, without any problem, originally, okay? However, when you have the line F equals to D, where you will try to put the values of D into F, that could be a problem. What the compiler is, is uh, trying to understand is you are putting a value of D which has a double size to flow. Potentially, it will lose of precision. Without running the code, the compiler would not know D is holding 1.23456, okay? It is possible after some operation in the middle that D has stored a, a, a some more content than F where F cannot hold. So in this case, this is considered as a dangerous operation. This is a potential of loss of precision. So the compiler is reluctant 
to compile for you. You will say, oh, this is a compilation error. Don't do it. Similarly, if you have a long, and you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is actually less than the uh, maximum uh, number of integer. Okay, integer holds this number, no problem. But when you do i equals to l, that could be a potential of loss of precision as well. Because long, potentially, it can have a longer number that I can hold. So the compiler will stop you from doing from doing this. And now, um, especially if, if such a thing happen that your program will crash, right? Or you have some unexpected outcome. If you are very conscious about this assignment, you say you have done some checking already, and you think that, oh, assign a number into a flow or assign a law into an integer. It's safe in this case, you can do something called casting, okay, a manual casting. That will allow you to suppress the error. Casting is done by putting a parenthesis and then your type in front of the variable. So let's say you want to cast the number D to flow. You can put a flow in front of this D. Now with a parenthesis in front of this uh, type, it means casting. So the compiler knows you want to convert the digit D, the variable D, into a flow. Okay, and then assign a value here and put it to L. Okay, and then after this statement, D will still be a double. Don't worry about that. D will stay what it is. It's only affecting the number f in this statement, okay? Where f will take the uh, values here to f. Similarly, l will be casted as an in, and the value here will be assigned to i. The value l will still be this number, and l will still be a long pipe. The only thing changed will be i, where i will have this value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Both examples will compile in this case. Now, we say there could be some dangerous or some problems. Let's look at that. What could go wrong with casting? If d is really has a very long number of digits, and you want to bring them to flow by casting. It is possible that the flow number is losing some of the precisions. So for instance, we have the number 1.2345789 here, okay, which already exceed the number of double that can host. Okay, you can see when we printed out this number, double can, can actually cannot host all the numbers here. Okay? Now, but this one, when you class it to a flow, what will happen is this flow has less precisions than the double. It store a number here, okay? It, it loses its precisions, okay? It will have less uh, digits available here. Now, don't ignore the, the problem of uh, losing precisions. One of the rockets flying to the moon has uh, exploded on Earth because they failed to um, check the um, rounding problem, you know, the casting problem, uh, overflow problem that caused them uh, uh, many millions of US dollars and lives. Okay? Now, if it comes to an integer, that could even worse. So for instance, you have a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, here, integer, and you want to cast it into a shot, where shot supports the number from negative three, two, seven, two, uh, seven, six, eight, to three, two, seven, six, seven, okay, only. Now, if you put this number very larger than the three, two, six, uh, seven, six, seven, right? And if you convert this number to a shot, what will happen is it will just go crazy. Okay, a uh, positive number is go negative number. The reason is just chop because of this casting, it will chop out the uh, high digits out. Okay, 
and then the remaining things will um, have a raw representation. Now, if you want to cast a character to integer, okay, you can also do a casting like here, chop symbol three, and then you want to print this symbol. Now, you think, you may think, I want to have the number three here, okay, it is not. This casting int symbol is a casting, yes, we, we agree. But it does not give you the value 3. Why? Because the unicode of 3 is 51. Okay? This casting, what this is doing is, is treat this number symbol as an uh, integer. Where this character store character 3 into 51. So this program actually print 51 for you. Okay? This is not what you want, maybe. Now, similarly, if you do things like this one, let's say you have the character 3, and you want x equals to simple times 10. Now, what is happening here is this symbol will be casted to integer first, and then perform the operation multiplied by 10. Okay, a character itself cannot use multiplication operations. You have to be casted to an integer first. Okay, so this is uh, automatically widening uh, uh, casting. Okay, so it converts to 51. And 51 times 10 gives you 510. So here, you will actually print 510. And it does not give you 30. Now, if you really want to convert a symbol 3 into an integer 3, what can we do? So, the proper way to convert a digit to int is by subtractions. So, basically, what we can do is to use the fact that 0 takes the unicode of 48, 3 takes the unicode values of 51, and then do the subtraction. Integer digit equals to 3 minus 0, that will give you simply 3. Because 51 minus 48 is 3. Now you may wonder, how about 11? Because the ASCII code for 10, well, there's no 10 in the ASCII code, you know? <laughs> the character is formed by 1 and 0, so 4, 9, and 4, 8. So 11 can't just use this trick to do it. Okay, uh, sorry, a 10 is 4, 9, and 4, and 11 with 4, 9, and 4, 9, if we represent as a string. Okay, it's two characters as a string. But, but we, we can't really do it, okay? So this only works for a single character, 0 to 9. Okay, if you want, if you have a string of 11, you want to convert that to an integer, we need to use some other method. So today we have go through the numerical uh, literal and the widening, narrowing concept and casting and how to convert a chart to a digit. I hope you enjoy this one. I shall see you later. Goodbye.